This is the Sound of Small Business, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm JP Davidson, and these are the inspiring stories and hard-earned lessons of successful Canadian entrepreneurs. The RBC Small Biz Panel Discussion features business owners and experts answering questions about the good problems faced by entrepreneurs across Canada. In this, the first of two panel episodes, we're looking at good problems around starting a business. Let's meet the panel and hear a little about their stories. First up is Julie Cole. Julie is co-founding VP of Mabel's Labels, the leading provider of the labels for the stuff kids lose. She's seen the business transform from basement startup to international phenomenon. I started this business 13 years ago with three other women. So it's a partnership of four. And we started for a couple of reasons. One was that we had a really good product idea. There was a product missing from the market. We found that parents were using masking tape and permanent marker when trying to put their children's names on their belongings so that they wouldn't get lost or end up in the lost and found. And we just thought, gosh, we can do a little bit better than that. We can. Let's try and find something more durable, something that's cuter, something that, you know, really speaks to us. So basically, we were filling a gap in the marketplace. And the second piece of that was that actually at that time, uh, my eldest child was diagnosed with autism. And I wanted to leave the traditional workforce so that I could focus on his therapy. Um, so at that time, that's when I said to my girls, hey, maybe now is the time for us to launch Mabel's Labels. And we started then, and we started in my sister's basement and uh, worked crazy hours, you know, everybody had full-time jobs, everybody was, you know, raising kids, that sort of thing, and put kids to bed, then go to the basement, make labels till two in the morning, and then get up and do it all again. <laughs> and and I guess that's one of those keys to success in small business, is being willing to put in that work. Oh, it's, yeah, you definitely have to be, um, you, you have to be willing to work hard, and you have to be willing to take chances. Next on our panel is Cliff Silvera, He's the Director of Operations at the Mississauga Convention Center. Cliff grew up in the hospitality business and has a strong understanding of family-owned businesses. I think I may have been born in the kitchen of a banquet hall. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Health department might not like that story, sure. but um, no, truly, so my, my experience, I grew up seeing all different parts of the business. My father and my uncle ran the kitchen for many years, but the reality is I didn't know that was my silent passion, what I was passionate about. I had a different plan in my head in terms of where I was going with my career. I trained in martial arts for many years. Mm. So that was a, an out loud passion. That's a passion that, a hobby, a passion, something I did every day. So when I graduated university, an opportunity came up for me to open up a martial arts studio. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna take what I learned in school and I'm gonna open up a karate studio. It was great, great time, great experience. And during that time, it was about a five year tenure that I was operating the karate studio. I learned a lot about business. I learned that being passionate about something, being good at something is not the same as being good at business. So I spent a lot of time practicing my martial arts, my kicks, my punches, and being a good instructor and having my other instructors be very good, but I didn't focus enough on the business element of it. So following that, decided five years into it that it was time for me to sell the business, take what I learned, and take a different route. I was involved in the family business throughout this entire time, working, serving, bartending, working in the kitchen, doing all different kinds of things. I uh, had an opportunity to uh, elevate my responsibility at the convention center, and um, I sort of discovered my secret passion. Uh, and what I believe, looking back, is what I always knew best, and I uh, haven't looked back since. Finally, rounding out the panel is Sarah Adams. She is the Vice President of Small Business at RBC. Sarah and her team work tirelessly to help aspiring entrepreneurs and established business owners start, manage, and grow their businesses. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you, and it's such an honor to be beside uh, such successful entrepreneurs. Now for our first good problem. A lot of small business owners start out working with friends or family. But how can you keep those relationships safe and solid from the start? Here's Julie Cole. I think the most important thing that we did early on was we set up a shareholders agreement. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth doing that. So basically that outlines, you know, who owns what shares, if somebody wants to leave the business, how that goes. Because I often say, if you think marital divorce is messy, you should try business divorce. <laughs> And get that shareholders agreement in place while you're all still friends. So I think that's a, when you're doing your business planning, yeah. if you can um, 
get a shareholders agreement in place straight away, that's probably the best advice I can give you. Now, can I ask you a question in regards sure. to that? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Is that allowed? I think um, so. uh, with the shareholders agreement, when you're starting it at, at an infancy stage, are you looking to what the future plan for this business would be? Yeah, you 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 are. You are. You are. You are. And that's why it actually, you know, we recently redid our shareholders of agreement. Course, you yeah. go and revisit yeah. it depending on yeah, so if things true. change or situations or change and through, you add people yeah. to yeah. it or yeah. take yeah. people yeah. off yeah. of it or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely in a way, a working document in that you don't just let it collect dust where you pull it out every little right. while and, yeah, and great, revisit. Great advice. So yeah. you'd probably say professional support for that. That's probably yes. not one yeah. to kind of sit around a kitchen yeah. table and figure out no, on your own. No, that's going to end, yeah, again, yeah. messy yeah. business divorce. Yeah. Yeah. If that's yeah. how you sure. do your yeah. shareholders. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, have to, you have to be careful to avoid those pitfalls when you're working with friends or family. But yeah. are there any advantages, I mean, there must be, to working with friends oh, and family, people you know Amazing. really well? Amazing. Yeah. I mean, your family, they're your... They're your bloodline, they're your backbone, they're, they're there to support you through the good and the bad, absolutely. And uh, if you have the opportunity to work in a family business, you're blessed, truly. Uh, it doesn't come without the challenges. Uh, it, it's hard to separate at times where business ends and family begins or, or vice versa. Um, and quite often it does get blended. Um, but it's just important to remember that your family is your family and you love them regardless. Doesn't matter how that board meeting may have gone or <laughs> or, or what happened. Um, yeah, I, I, and you, there's a there's a level of trust that exists. And which they know is you, right? And they know you. They, they know, know you're good. You. You're bad. You're yeah, they, you're exactly. Happy, you're they, you know what you're getting yeah. into. You know why? Why I started with three other women. I'm like. Everybody knows each other's strengths, each other's weaknesses. We yeah. know, you know, and it actually allowed us to bring four good brains together and divide and conquer up the jobs instead of me having to do it all. You know, yeah. somebody could go to RBC yeah. and deal with the bank or somebody could meet with the printing guy and find equipment. Somebody could, you know, I could try and write a press release. And so we were able to kind of divide up. But absolutely, when, you, when you're in that boardroom and you have a little bit of a scrappy moment, you need to yeah. be able to walk out and say, hey, are you bringing the, the potatoes to Thanksgiving tomorrow? You know, you have to be able to move on from it. It's practice. Being a new entrepreneur is exciting, but it can also be a little intimidating for those with limited business experience. Here's a question that'll help build business savvy for those just starting out. What advice do you have for young entrepreneurs looking to start a business? Here's Sarah Adams. It's terrific that we've got that question because we recently did a survey over the summer period, an Ipsos resurvey, polling Canadians around their entrepreneurial spirit, and we discovered that 67% of millennials would like to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. You know, the average was 57, which is still really high. So there is that desire, I think, to create one's own destiny and really contribute. They're creative, they're innovative, which is fantastic because that's what the country needs. So I think for many young people, it's really relying on those who have sort of paved the path ahead. I mean, one thing that I certainly hear across the country of successful entrepreneurs is that they often will have a mentor, yes. someone who can yeah. really, you know, be transparent, honest, supportive where they need to be, but really, you know, kind of do that wake up call once in a while. Like, yeah. is this really? And so someone that you can really rely on yeah. to give you mm -hmm. that feedback, because again, you're your own bot. I mean, you yeah. don't have yeah. that sort of uh, yeah, you having need, a business coach is yeah, also like, a good idea. Yes. Like that they kind of somebody can yeah. take that dual yeah. role, role of mentor and, yeah. and business who coach. Give you brutal honesty. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You need it. We all yeah. need that. Yeah. 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 Cliff and Julie, who was that person for you when you were when you were starting out? Can you tell me about your business mentor? Uh, for me, it was definitely my father and, and my uncle, truly. I mean, uh, we don't always see eye to eye in, in the way we do things, but I always respect their choices, their decisions, their advice. My father would probably say that I often don't listen to his advice, <laughs> but I always listen to his <laughs> advice. I just don't always take his advice. Right. Uh, but I truly do. You know, um, they challenge me more than anybody in my life. So, yeah, yeah, so it's great. I had a little collection of people, I would say, not any one person, and I continue to. Right. And, and, and some of those have changed over the years, depending on, you know, we often use the expression around Mabel's labels, like different horses for different courses. So a mentor who may have been awesome for us in those early days, you know, maybe yeah. you need somebody That's else great, when you're at a different level, point, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, that can change it, and that's okay. I feel like now I get a lot of my mentorship on a peer model, right. like peer mentorship, yeah, which has true. been fabulous. Yeah.
Choosing where to locate your business is an important step in getting started and a decision you might be living with for a long time. So is it better to be in a busy urban area or a rural area with less competition? Here's Julie Cole with a response. I know for us it doesn't matter at all, really. We're a web-based business, we're e-commerce. We make our money from people entering from our website. So it doesn't really matter where we are. However, we have had difficulty sometimes being able to find good hires for certain departments because we're not in GTA. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, lure them out to where we are, yeah. out to the burbs, you know? <laughs> so that's probably the one area where we found it a little bit difficult is when it comes to hiring. Sure. But as far as actually selling our product, no problem. I just, Which I, is great too, because then we can pay cheap rent, yeah. right? That's nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ours, is, ours is quite the opposite. Yeah. 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 Location, yeah. location, location, location. Yeah, location. yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Julie, I wanted to f follow up with you about that. Um, did you have you ever thought about moving into bricks and mortar stores or anything more location based? Well, we actually believe it or not, right now our facility is a fourteen thousand square foot facility, and that's where our departments are and where we make the labels. But two years ago, we did launch a retail product that is in Walmart Canada, right. all over Canada, and 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 several stores in the U.S. But but they're worried about the location, not you. That's right. <laughs> that's they right. Worry. That's we worry right. about making sure they put us in a good good placement yeah. in the store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. Networking is vitally important for any new business, but how do you turn those new connections into sales? Some business owners say they're nervous to go into sales mode too soon. Cliff kicks off the panel's advice for turning contacts into customers. You ask. I mean, you, you've made connections, you've networked, you've opened up your, your audience. You ask for the business. I think these days, uh, a lot of times, we're scared to just ask. And you're not asking for something. You're asking for the opportunity to provide something. And in a lot of cases uh, in business, we are potentially doing you a favor by introducing my product to you. If I would have known about Mabel's Labels years ago, uh, yeah, my daughter's only four, but yeah. a few years ago, we probably wouldn't have lost her shoes or her, her uh, items yeah. around the place. So uh, if I was asked to purchase Mabel Labels, I would look back and say, you did me a favor. Right. So by asking for the business, you're not inconveniencing, you're providing somebody with an opportunity. Yeah, and I advantage. certainly yeah. think there's a time and place. Like, obviously, you know, with you, if I was talking to you about it, if I was playing, you'd be like, you'd be like, Julie, I can help you out. If you yeah. want, if you want, here's my card. If you need some help, Absolutely. give me a call yeah. anytime. And that's like, awesome, right? Yeah. So there's a time and a place. And I get the whole, like, I do believe in a call to action. You know, like Absolutely. there's no problem, no problem saying, look, hey, I've got a solution for your problem. But also I get the, I get a bit of the yuck about feeling salesy. And uh, I know on social media, when I'm talking to people, I, I always think my sales come from just being top of mind. Like I try mm -hmm. to make sure yeah. that we're top of mind. So when they feel they need that, they'll be like, oh, I remember meeting that Julie, or I follow her on Twitter, or, you know, and that's where just, you know, our social media rules are 80, 20. So 80% of the time we're just engaged in conversation. 20% of the time we might be saying, hey, we have a promo on now, or our ultimate yeah. back to school combos out and school's around the corner. So let's get going, you know? Yeah. So it's just about balancing it and, and making sure you feel okay. comfortable. but. I, I do find, Sarah, like I do find like with women, I, I think we tend to be a little less, um, I don't know, it's kind of like writing your own bio. We, we're not very good at, at being like, look, this is what I've created and it's amazing and you would love it. We're not always so great at that. And I think we need to practice and get a little bit better. So come on, Sarah, get out there. Sell, sell, sell. Practice yeah. is perfect. <laughs> well, and they're a great, again, you know, if sales isn't your strong point, I mean, maybe your passion was yeah. creating the, the product or the service, mm -hmm. but sales isn't. There are I people mean, that's, for that. There are, yeah. and, there you know, are people for that. or if you yeah. can't get the people, yeah. then, you know, there's networks and, again, <sighs> courses Absolutely. you can take and so forth just to become more comfortable. Because yeah. I, I think, Cliff, to your point around, at the end of the day, I think individuals do expect to be asked. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. it's, it's yeah. some, you know, you feel good about being asked, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that that might be the right, and it, when it's the right match, yeah. then yeah. it's the um, right time. Yeah. When you're starting a new business, every day is a learning opportunity. With that in mind, if our panelists could go back and start their businesses all over again, what would they change? Our business is a little different. Obviously, we're, we sell a service, we sell a product, but we have a facility or uh, we have a few facilities, so it would be buying up land. <laughs> if I had the opportunity and the resources and is able to see into the future, you know, the good pocket areas, right. I'd bought more land, especially in certain areas. Absolutely. Mississauga land yeah. hasn't gotten any cheaper in the time no, you've been No, land just keeps getting more expensive. That would have been, yeah, that would have been what I... 
but I, you know, there's no way of knowing, right? So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm a little torn on mine. I mean, sometimes I think, oh, why did we create a personalized product? Because every time it comes in, it's like, then we have to start over again. We don't just have something sitting on a shelf that we throw an envelope. But at the same time, it does keep that's the inventory it, low. Yeah. And it also, um, I mean, that's the, that's the whole point. That's what makes us what we Everything's are. Everything's yeah. It's yeah. so highly personalized oh. from they put their name on, they pick a color, and they pick a little picture icon. It's so about that kid. Oh. That's kind of the, that's the secret sauce. Yeah. So, yeah. But if I were to get, maybe I'd do something not, you know, more off the shelf. Who knows? Who knows? Seems like you're, you're all you're, you're both all about looking forward as entrepreneurs. Totally. It's not about the regrets. And like yeah. all, it's all those learning. things we've learned, I mean, there are so many things we've learned along the way, and that's, you know, there's there's no point in dwelling. It's about mm -hmm. learning, not feeling guilty, like with kids or business or our careers, not feeling guilty, just saying sorry or I'll do better next time and move on. Well, yeah. I think that's almost in the DNA of successful entrepreneurs. This has been The Sound of Small Business, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Look out for another panel episode where we'll focus on the good problems business owners face when they're ready to take their company to the next level. Search for The Sound of Small Business wherever you find podcasts or visit rbc.com slash building business, where you can find advice and tips on how to start, manage, or grow your business. Thanks for listening. This podcast series is intended as general information only and is not to be relied upon as constituting legal or other professional advice.